All right. Hey guys, Malcolm Moore here, and welcome back to winter. Oh man, it is good to be back. Today is my first day back riding, and to be honest with you, I am a little bit rusty. So the plan is, in today's video, I want to run you through some of the movements that you should be doing on top of your snowboard, because there's definitely an incorrect way to do it, and it's often on your first day back that those bad habits start to creep, worm their way into your riding. And that we do not want to happen. So I want to set you up with a solid foundation so that on day one, whether you ride just a few days a season or 100 plus, you're starting it in the right way. Let's get into this. So let's start off by looking at two of the biggest moves that you can make on your board flexion and extension. That is getting down low and standing up tall. Now the task I'm setting here is to traverse across the slope and just practice getting down low and then standing up tall. If you're a beginner, you might find this a good exercise just to test your balance. But for more advanced riders, the goal that we're trying to achieve here is to be able to work through this range of movements but still leave a nice, thin, line in the snow. So let's take a look at that line that I just left there. Not too bad, if you can see it behind me there. And the reason we want to do that is because if you are able to leave this thin line in the snow whilst you're working through this range of movements up and down, that means that you're already doing the next movement well, and that is a lateral movement. A lateral movement simply means inclining your body into the slope. So you can see, if I ease off that lateral movement, immediately my board starts skidding. Let me turn around. But if I get it right, I get that nice thin line behind me. My board tilts onto its edge and I'm able to carve. So beginners, when you're working through this exercise, if you're unable to leave that thin line, if you're going up and down, and your board, if it's kind of skidding like this, it probably means that you need to increase that lateral movement. So, we've got flexion and extension, and as you're working through these movements, have a feel to what it does to your board underneath your feet. So as I sink down, I can see I'm in this kind of strong position, but really as I push away from the board, as I push into it, I can feel the pressure increase underfoot almost kind of drives me back up the slope and I achieve grip on my board. When I get up to this high point, that pressure kind of releases. So maybe think that high point, when we release the pressure, push up, release the pressure, that's a good time to roll the board onto its new edge and sink back down into this strong position as we're coming through the lower part of the turn and that is a good place to get some grip. So now let's bring these movements into our normal riding. And you can see now that I'm not exaggerating those movements nearly as much. You know, you, in reality, you don't need to get down that low, but there still is a range of movement that I'm playing with. And you can see, let me just get into it now, that with just making these movements, I'm able to achieve some pretty good board performance. You can see behind me now, I've got the board carving. I stand up, release that pressure, set it on its edge. The lateral movement, how I balance and hold that edge. And really, I'm not doing much at all. The goal is to keep snowboarding as simple as possible and make sure you're not messing around with the incorrect movements. So, let's just pause there for a minute. You may have noticed that the slope that I've chosen to do this on is quite mellow. We're at the bottom of a red piece, but in reality, this is more like a green or an easy blue. And I've done that on purpose because by just making these movements, by just focusing on flexion and extension and a lateral movement, you can ride well, but you make these big kind of open turns. If I was to do just those movements on something steeper, I'd end up going way too fast and I wouldn't be able to hold, hold that line. I wouldn't be able to get the board to carve. So if we wanna go onto steeper slopes, we need to make those turns much tighter, much smaller. 
And for that, we need to start talking about rotation. So what do I mean by rotation? Well, let me put my trusty S diagram up in the corner there. In the last turns, that S shape was very big and our board was able to exactly follow that S shape. The nose of the board led you into it and the tail followed the same line. And we were relying on the side cut of the board to pull us round in that shape. Now we can still make that S shape, but to make it smaller, we need to turn the board slightly ahead of the S. The nose is gonna turn in and the tail isn't gonna exactly follow it, which means there will be an element of skid, but that is needed if you want to bring the board around in a tighter arc. So let's take that idea to its maximum. Let's actually completely get rid of that S shape, kind of squeeze it in till it becomes a vertical line down the slope, yet we're still gonna ro rotate the board around from one skid to another. So this is one of my favorite exercises and I've actually gone in depth to this exercise in its own video that I'll link in the description down below. But I'm just gonna quickly go over it again here. So start off by giving me a watch and, you can, and see if you can figure out what movements I'm making to get the board to rotate exactly around a point. So, let me just come in. So essentially we're trying to go from side slip to side slip. Rotating the board around, 180, heels, and back to toes. And guys, if you're wondering, by the way, I'm using the Insta360 X3 camera here. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. And I've got a review of this camera that I'll be bringing out next week, probably. So, back to the drill. You might have figured it out. Let me just pull over to the side here. The movements that I'm making to get that board to turn all come now from my knees. In fact, I was making sure I wasn't doing any of those flexion or extension movements that I was doing earlier. I was really trying to isolate the knee movements. As I go from heels to toes, I simply push my front knee, so for me, my left knee, over the board. You can see as I do that now, it's having an effect. But the key is I hold my back knee. So front knee pushes over the board and then back knee follows. Now it's essentially like my knees are in a forward position. Let me just get past this guy. Doo, 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 doo. My knees are in this forward position, and if I want to pull the board around, my front knee rotates round, back knee follows. So it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but trust me, this exercise can be a little bit fiendish. It can be quite tricky to get right, and it's actually easier to start it on a slope that's slightly steeper. It can be quite hard to do it on a really mellow slope. So now you might be thinking, okay, you've got that movement, but those turns look awful. You're simply going from a skid to a skid. Why would I want to do that? Well, now we're going to bring it more into our normal turns. We're going to start bringing it back towards that S shape. You know, I'm going to start in a traverse across the slope, give myself some direction across the hill, and I'm just going to use that same movement, and I'm not going to be in as narrow a corridor now, but you'll see I get pretty smooth, small, tight, S-shaped turns that are ideal on a steeper slope. So let's give that a go. Front knee pulls me in, back knee follows, and see how quickly the board comes around. I'm in a much tighter corridor to what I was in earlier. Round, heels, toes, back to heels again. Got the crew behind me. So if that isolates the knee movement, now let's look at the whole picture and let's bring back in some of those flexion and extension movements as well. So I'm down a little bit lower, board's gripping. I stand up, use a little knee movement to pull it around tighter, lean laterally into the slope to get the board to grip. And now I can really blend my riding. I can make quick edge changes across the slope just by pulling my knees back and forth quickly like that. Or if I want big open turns, I can simply stand up and lean in. So when we're riding, it's all about blending these movements and snowboarding really is quite simple. There's not a whole lot going on. So if on your first day back, 
go through those two exercises. Traverse across the slope, get down low, stand up tall, make sure you know your range of movements for the flexion and extension. Feel how when you push against the board, you can get grip and then release it to aid you in the edge change. And then isolate the knee movements. Be able to turn the board from heels to toes and back again, staying within this narrow skidded corridor. And then you can put it all together and create whatever turn shape you like. All right, finally got a bit of sun. I was trying to wait for that earlier, but it just wasn't coming. So thank you for watching guys. We're just getting started for this winter. I love hearing all your questions, your ideas for things that you'd like me to cover. So put them down in the comments below and who knows, I could be answering one of those questions and making a video on it in the next one. Thank you as always. See you later. Bye.